guys, we just finished renovating this terrace and we're so excited that we're spending all the time out here. So we just thought we would film a video out here. So the topic we want to address today is the question of could I live small and maybe give you some ideas of how you can test that out. Mm -hmm. Some people can just jump all in and downsize right away, move to a small space or... Maybe put everything in storage, just get rid of it. Yeah. And, and just, some... yeah. And some of us need a little time to let it sink in and test it out and see what is the right size, is this really for me, is this right now and how could it work out? Yeah, I think one of the first things that we did was we actually sectioned off half of our apartment. Yeah. Right? So we closed off two rooms and we started by emptying them out and downsizing, putting things in the other rooms. So gradually we moved from four rooms to two rooms. And that was a really, really good process for us because it gave us something really practical to work on. Yeah, and for, so for a while, I think only like a month or two, we actually paid for the full apartment, but yeah. we didn't use more than half of it. It was just the initial test, just move into a couple of rooms and see could we imagine ourselves living in this space. Yeah, and after two months, we were like, okay, we can do that. It's not that difficult. Yeah. So we just decided to rent out the rest of the space. Yeah, we were pretty hooked like instantly. So we decided to rent out two rooms, as you can, some of you guys know. We've been renting out two rooms and having a tenant living with us for about around three years. three years. Which ended in November last year. Uh, and shortly after that we found out that Maria was pregnant. So yeah, so we were going to need some extra space again. Or we wanted it. <laughs> we yeah. could maybe fit a baby in the two rooms, but... It was nice yeah. to have a little bit extra. But I think also, if you do it gradually and take the process a little bit slower, I think all the values kind of gets under your skin and it's likely to stick longer. It's like, if you do it fast, then it might just be like a phase or something you go through. But if you do it gradually, it kind of gets in your system and it becomes part of your mindset and your lifestyle mm. in general. So I think you will have a better chance of success in yeah. the long run if you do it a little slower. And it also really takes a long time to downsize all your belongings. For example, my, my music collections, it, it took a lot, very long time for me to get rid of my CDs and my clothes. Yeah. It's, it really takes time, so you can't really like jump from A to B in an instant. Some people could probably, but I think it's a very probably. small percentage. I don't think I'm very sentimental about things. I can pretty easily get rid of stuff. I don't attach myself too much to it emotionally, but but still, it, it just takes time to get through the thousands of items that you own when you start downsizing. So yeah, for us, it was definitely a process over a couple of years. Yeah, and time might also be beneficial if you need your partner to get on board on the idea. Yeah, for us, it was me. He needed a little convincing. Yeah, in the beginning I didn't really see why we should live small. Yeah, yeah, and it took a while before he got on board. And yeah, so if you're the one who's all hooked on the idea, just be patient and take it. Yeah, taking the slow route is definitely a good way to go. I think, especially for me, when we moved into two rooms of the apartment, I found out pretty quickly that I could do this and there was it was all right. I didn't yeah. miss the space. It became very tangible for you and you could really see, okay, this can practically, mm -hmm. it can work. Yeah. Mm. And also, I think you need to not stress yourself about downsizing and going small. Like, just because you want to downsize and live small, you don't necessarily have to live tiny. <laughs> There's a variety of amounts of square meters and square feet mm. in between the 2,000 square feet and 150 square feet. Yeah. <laughs> so When you add up the money you save just from going from a four bedroom apartment to a three bedroom or three or two. to two uh, and so on, if you add up all that money from a year, you'll be amazed how much money you'll have to travel or do whatever you want to do. Yeah, so don't stress yourself about um, could I live tiny? Just ask yourself, could yeah. I live smaller than I do now? And then make the first steps. Because for some people, if you live in a 4,000 square feet house, it might be a huge step for you to go down to 1,500. Mm -hmm. And that's fair. It's not a problem. You don't have to go all the way down. So just give yourself that 
freedom of actually figuring out, okay, could I live small? Small is not the same word as tiny. So give yourself a break. Yep. Another option is that you could test out other spaces as well. So you might go maybe on Airbnb or something and rent a tiny apartment or a smaller apartment than the one you're currently in, uh, in your neighborhood. So maybe just test out a two bedroom apartment right around the corner and just rent it for a week or two to test it out. And you can even do this with tiny houses as well because that's what we did when we went to California. We yeah. wanted to test out the tiny houses and we don't really have that concept yet in Denmark. It's not widely spread out here. Um, so we really want to test out what it would actually physically feel like to be in that space. And we learned a lot from that. So mm -hmm. I think if you have the opportunity, just save up a little bit of money, put it towards renting an alternative space mm -hmm. just for... We just stayed one night. Look at it as a lifestyle vacation. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> lifestyle research vacation yeah all right that's all for now guys if you like the video give it a thumbs up and see you next time yep bye